Welcome to Forensic Detectives. I am Dr. Koz, your guest medic guest detective, and today I am your gas sample cooling expert. Folks, when one is measuring high temperature gas, one must reduce the temperature of the gas before it enters your gas analyzer. Otherwise, you're going to melt components within the gas analyzer. And beyond that, you're going to have erroneous data. The sensor will be affected by the high temperature gas coming in, and your data will be total garbage. So, what do we need to do? Look, when you're measuring high temperature flue gases, gases from kilns, gases from commercial appliances such as boilers and furnaces, you are sampling with your probe high temperature. High temperature, I'm talking things above 150 degrees Fahrenheit, above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This system can accept gas for short periods of time up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you pop in your probe, which this comes with the unit, it's a nice one for probe, all metal, all aluminum, you pop it in, the gas will run through, the high temperature gas will come through the high temperature silicone and through the water trap into the cooling system. Now what's happening folks, we want to cool the gas to take it down to less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit so the analyzer can accept the gas within the safe operating temperature. So the gas comes into the water trap, it probably hit its dew point at about somewhere around here and it's going to condense into liquid water. That's what dew point is from its vapor phase, from the high temperature vapor phase it's steaming everywhere it's going to hit this section about the first part of the radiator it's going to pass the dew point and it's going to come into the liquid phase it's going to get trapped in our water trap and it's going to continue when i say it's i'm talking about the gas the gas will continue to go through the radiator it's a fan force radiator so it's very efficient and it's going to cool very quickly it's going to come out of our cooling system here out of the radiator and it's going to go through the NOx filter that we have right over here it's very important especially for flue gases we want to eliminate the acidic gases and capture them before they enter our analyzer again so we don't have any cross interference and erroneous data okay so this guy will trap all the acidic gases and it will also go through a little particulate filter just to make sure things are clean and we're not going to contaminate the analyzer and then it's going to go through into the analyzer folks and it's ready to get sampled. Now it's a good idea to have a infrared thermometer to make sure we're about 100 degrees Fahrenheit or less which I'm sure you will be and you'll have confidence that your system is good to go. Now a few points folks look the system takes it comes with the charger pop it on it transfers the 110 volt down to 12 volt DC so the fan can operate and it can cool efficiently. That's the first thing. The second thing is when the water trap is filling up with water, you want to get yourself a little flat head screwdriver and all you do is just pop up this little valve, bang, and it will let the water release onto the ground. Okay, folks, so if it doesn't get too high, it's about 30, 40 mil reservoir and it will trap the water. That's the first thing. The other thing is once you're sampling, it may actually condense at the bottom here. That's okay. That's why we have the barb connections. Very easy, pop in and pop out. And you want to make sure before you end the day and pack the system that there is no water within the radiator, folks. That's a great idea to do that, to check the system is clean before you pop it all out. Okay, folks. Now, the last point is that obviously some people may not know this, but you need a micro pump built into your analyzer to create the suction and the flow of air. Without this analyzer, without the built-in pump, there's no movement of air. This guy has a built-in pump and make sure whatever analyzer you're using, it, ha it should have a built-in pump. Otherwise, there will be no flow of air. Okay, now, Dr. Coz, I have one of your handheld analyzers and I want to draw the the air. Well, this does not have a pump, so you need to bring yourself an external pump just like this guy. This is our gas sampling pump. We sell tons and tons of these guys. And you're going to, instead of putting it on your analyzer, you're going to pop it onto this guy. And then at the bottom, it's going to release the air. It's going to draw the negative pressure through the system and onto your gas detector folks that's the way it works it's a very versatile system you could use our detectors you could use another competitor's detectors or anything else but make sure you have that flow of air don't assume there is a pump that's creating that vacuum no you have to supply that okay folks look that's about it i hope you love the system look it also comes in a nice waterproof pelican style case so you could grab it and go for it and you'll take a bashing and a beating not a problem at all it's built like a tank folks look till then be well be safe See you soon.